This is what the gourd looked like to begin with. I ended up making a selection of a gourd. It's a relatively large one. It's got a decently thick skin on it. They came from Pennsylvania. And when I look at a gourd, I'm trying to find the negative and the positive about it. And right here, it's a bit of a divot. So that will end up being featured toward the back and we'll have the feature toward the front. If we flip it up, You'll notice I used the compass, and this is going to be where my pine needle ring will be to establish the base. And here, you see there's opposite sides is where I will drill the holes for the weaving to go through. First step. Okay, next step. We've come up with the design. And everything with the pencil, we're going to cut. So here goes. It's noisy. I'm using my Dremel with a rotary cutting blade following along on the pencil marks. I do have a dust mask on and safety goggles. And as we're going through this, we're just cutting along the lines, like I said. And as we can, we reach in there with a saw blade go around eliminating the debris on the inside as we're doing it. And as you'll see in a minute, I use a melon baller, which is a really nice tool to clean out the inside of the gourd from the membrane. At this stage, the membrane that's all been dried out is removed. And the next step is sandpaper to give it a relative smoothness. So that's our next one. relatively good for that step. You might now see there's a pencil line all the way around here. So we're going to be placing a different bit on the end of the uh, Dremel. Let me see if I can find it in my kit here. It's basically a uh, barrel. Here it is. So this will go on the end of the Dremel, and then we'll smooth it out. It really does a nice job with that, so I'll put this on next. Okay, make sure your mask is on next, and you got safety glasses on, so here we go. stage is we have to change our Dremel bit out to a 113. It's a very tiny bit and this is what we're going to drill all of our holes with. So let's take now the goal I'm going to do is holes drilled all the way around the perimeter and all around the ridge here and then the pine needles will lay all the way around this edge and around this edge. And when we're done with these holes, we're going to flip it over and you can see a pencil mark and we're going to drill every other side but not across directly, angled at each other. So when we do the weave, it'll look much nicer and it's a little as
probably you'll notice when I did the drilling, I always clamp the gourd in my knees. It is a relatively strong, but it will crack if you put too much pressure on it. And you just know how much pressure you can put on it. When you don't put it in a piece of metal, just clamping in your knees, it, it really does a nice job for keeping it stable. And that's the way I've always seemed to work with it. And it, it, it does a nice job. The next step is to do the pyography. I've drawn oak leaves all the way around the gourd. I don't know how well it can be seen on the camera. Let's see how it goes. I'll just do a very brief thing because it's not in um, position that I can comfortably do this. But as you follow along each of the lines, it will burn permanently each of these pencil marks. But doing it on a desk is not the most ideal way of doing it. It needs to be basically set on my lap so I can hold the gourd securely. But this is the idea of it. So it's a very hot tool. And you can get these in different, um, I think they call these pens. And there's different tips that plug into the burner machine. So as I progress a little bit more, I'll come and show you. We finish the outline of the oak leaves. Now I have to do all of the shading and I think I decided I'm going to do stipples or dots and then the veins of all the leaves will be another step. So and a couple of hours and this is what has been done so far it's with a burning dot tip it's very fine so it's just a million little dots that one does so there'll be a lot more this is preliminary most of the dots are done I noticed there's a couple more spots like here that still has to be filled in but I started the veining and it does make a difference. I like it. So, I started doing the dye on the gourd. We finished all the texturing with the burner. The dye I'm using is Echo Flow. It's a leather dye. This particular one I like is uh, with dark mahogany. Gloves, of course, are a necessity. An application rag and an excess rag to wipe off. And try not to get it on the inside of the gourd because the gourd is very porous on the inside and it will stain your nice clean interior. As you go around, if you like it, sorry for the wind, it's very windy outside on my porch today. So just keep going around as dark as you may like it or however. So when I'm done with the whole thing, I'll come back and show you the finished product. The staining is completed. I prefer that nice dark mahogany color to it. As all the holes indicate, this is where we're going to do the weaving with the artificial sinew and the pine needles. And before your polyurethane, you put your um, burning tool in, your logo, end up finding and ordering one with my logo on it from, I think it was eBay. The next step is a, I use a Krylon matte finish spray. At this point, 
we've come all the way around and because of the angle that we started at we're always going to be going on the inside coming out on the opposite side of that hole here so as we go around and we're going to keep this quiver going around going back in on the other side and coming back here so we'll establish a nice thing so as we're going around it'll start the weave and we're going to set it just a little bit on the outside so as we're coming out we'll get a nice foot for the basket to set on to keep it from tipping side to side it's already actually We're off to the next step on this acorn basket. We have the base is completed. I did three um, coils on that and it sets nice and firm. The next step is going to be a little tricky. In my selection I have of antlers, this one, it just fits in here perfectly. But the trick to this one I think I'm going to have is the antler comes into each of the openings. And to secure it, I'm going to do a row of pine needles around each one, but not finish it off. Because as we go around to the back here, each time this antler comes out, this, after one looping of the pine needles, the pine needle loop will go over top of this, back down, and over top of this. Then it'll also string into here to hold that securely. On this opening, it will happen to the same way over here. And as we see on this side, it's going to go behind it and around this. So at no time when I'm doing this, I can't finish off one of the openings. So as you've seen on the bottom and on other things, you're going to have all these strings or um, the ends of the pine needles hanging out. So when I start working with artificial sinew, that's going to be a fun challenge to keep everything from knotting into one another and having it all loop into one another the right way at the right time. So this will be a good challenge. When I start it, I'll give you a heads up on that one. We're working our way through the oak basket. So this is what I was meaning, that we have to have everything going at the same time. So where the antler is going to go, you can't finish each one. So there's enough um, artificial sinew to continue the loop. You leave the straw for the needles to set in. And this the, the clothespins are just trying to keep all the needles out of my way. So I'm going to finish going around with this one and then we're going to secure the antler in there and as the gourd goes it kind of creates itself as you go about it. So that's this step and basically next time I come back the antler will be secured in and then I'll show you how I'll finish that off. The finials that we're going to be putting on the oak basket are made of copper. So what I do is, it's just simple sheet copper, and then I found and cut out a pattern of various oak leaves. Then with a very strong needle, I just traced it out on, um, it's an old mouse pad, and then I have some very tiny little scissors. So once I finish cutting all this out, then I bring, this is like a rough cut here. I will then take a needle or some very firm thing and put the veining in and then just stip a little bit. We've completed the gourd. Its name is Joklin, Valley of Dead Oaks. All of the baskets that I make are named with Native American names. This one is done with an oak leaf motif all the way around it. It's been 
embedded into the gourd by using a form of art called pyography, which is burning. The next kind of motif that we placed on it is a grouping of pine needle basket tree, which has been woven to edge all of the openings of the gourd. It also has a base of the needles here, which really helps to keep the, bar, the basket secure on its pedestal. A deer antler has been woven into it and secured with the pine needles. A set of three oak acorns are secured in this little window here. And then around to the other opening here are a grouping of fall leaves made of copper, again oak. We can see onto the inside how the base has been secured. So this one is Jokelin. I hope you enjoy the process.